It's tip-off time in China for the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship final. Myself, Tim Long, alongside analyst Paulo Kennedy, set to talk you through the action in Chongsha. The most successful team in tournament history takes on the second most successful. 27 previous editions of this competition. These two have combined for 20 gold medals. The only two teams to have beaten the defending champions in this year's competition. China's eight-game winning streak versus the Philippines' seven-game streak. It's a fitting final in a red-hot atmosphere. And what a fitting opening tip. Out of bounds off Cho Chi. Philippines are going to have the first possession. Some confusion there amongst the referees, but it will be Philippines' ball. And almost a false start. But soon we're going to get the ball in the hands of Jason Castro. Let's see what he can do against Zhao Jiwei. De Campo to Castro. Gabe Norwood. Here's Honti Veros. It's six from downtown in the semi final yesterday. Yi guarding Blatch. Blatch calling for the ball, receiving it now. Looking to get inside behind the back. Steps back for the three. Blatch off the mark. What a way that would have been to start. Well, what a matchup with those two. And how about the skills of Andre Blatch? He left Yi reeling backwards, but he couldn't hit the three point shot. Chao Shi Wei. Ding. Back to Chao Shi Wei. Here's Cho Chi. Yi calling for it inside. Cho Chi off the mark with the long two. And Honti Veros grabs the ball. No score yet in the final. Here goes Castro looking to get in and hang it over the top of Cho Chi. How about that elevation? And all tournament long, guards have wandered into the Chinese paint and been swatted away mercilessly. But what about the class of Castro just floating it over the top? Came down with snow on it. From the near side, he fakes the three, drives inside Ding, back out to the perimeter. They'll move it around for the three. China still not on the board as Cho Peng misses from the outside. Blatch looking to battle against Yi and the contact. And two wins already for the Philippines. Castro able to get in and score over the big men and Blatch drawing a foul on Yi. Non-shooting foul, so Pontiveros to inbound to Blatch again. Up against Yi Jianlian. Norwood taking over, guarded by Cho Peng. Honti Veros from the outside picks up right where he left off in the semi-final. And the Philippines couldn't have scripted this start much better. Honti Veros, he hit six last night in the semis. He opens up with a trifecta here. Chao Shi Wei receives it back on the perimeter. Ding's going to put it up this time and gets the first points on the board for the hosts. And he was so important for China last night. He was like the X factor that put them over the hump and great start for him as well. Norwood, Cho Peng knocked to the floor. Norwood takes on a shot, able to rattle it around and get it to drop. Well, if they could have scripted it any better, it would have been Gabe Norwood getting a jump shot early. Sometimes he's a reluctant shooter, but that one looked nice. Chao Shi Wei into Yi. Back to the perimeter. They move it around for the three-pointer for Cho Peng again. Back-to-back -back threes for China. And that spells trouble for the Philippines. They're going to want to pack the paint, but if the wings for China hit the three points, that's hard to do. One-point game. Castro pulling up for a three, answers back. He has just been superb at these championships. We well, said it was an all-guns blazing matchup. It's been an all-guns blazing start from the Philippines. And it goes towards Cho Chi, looking to drive against Blatch, and gets the foul. We see Blatch guarding Joe Chi, and he looks like a long, skinny fella, but he is mobile. He draws the foul there. He's very hard to stop from the high post because he can hit that jump shot from 15 feet. Just 19 years of age, the number 15 for China. A huge talent. Here he is now. Handed off to Chao Shi Wei and then Cho Peng from the outside. Oh! Put back in with authority! Hear ye, hear ye! Hear this crowd roar. Wow, what a play. And as I said in the preview, whenever they need a basket, Yi seems to come up with a big one like that. Castro finding Blatch, who answers back with one of his own. And we talked about 
the Chinese defense forcing opponents away from the basket. So far, they can't keep Castro out of the paint. Still a 2-3 zone from the Philippines, despite the pair of triples from China. Chao Shi Wei onto the corner, Ding for three. They keep firing from the outside. And the foul on De Campo as the rebound is secured by Yi. They caught a hold on the rebounding contest. A clash of bodies there. We see the Philippines, they're willing to give up some of those three-point shots. They don't want to give up anything in the paint early. Four-point Philippines lead as Chao Shi Wei takes a seat and it goes towards Yi. Go Ai Lun into the ball game. Here he is now, Guo. Towards the foul line. Stops and puts it in off the window. Well, that's such a tough play. They leave him open. He's only shooting around 25% from three-point range, so he probes and hits a tough floater. De Campo out to Norwood, who's taking on the three now. And five early points for the number five. Well, there's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow from Norwood. He, like I said, he's a reluctant shooter, but when his three-point shot gets going, all of a sudden there's five offensive options on the floor for the Philippines. What a start we've had to this final. Knocked away. Now the Philippines can come in transition. Black's joining, moving it on towards Castro and fouled by Cho Peng. And a professional foul there from Cho Peng. Rather than allowing the easy layup, Tab Baldwin staring at the referee. He thought that should have been intentional. We see a poke in the eye there for Ding on the drive. And he's still sitting down under the basket. It didn't look like there was anything in it, just an inadvertent finger as he drove through. But that doesn't make it hurt any less. He's actually struggling to see down there at the moment. And that would be a huge blow for China. A very talented young man, just 22 years of age. Had uh, 10 points, five boards, a block yesterday. Li Gen is into the game. Ding Yan Yu Hang is going to sit on the bench. Castro. Let's see if he can get away from Guo. Spinning into the lane, over to the corner. Blatch. Blatch looking to drive in. De Campo for three. Short, and the rebound grabbed by Yi. Another good offensive set from the Philippines, but for the first time in the game, the wide open jumper doesn't drop. Zhou Peng onto Yi. Up against Blatch now, gets away from him, gets to the glass, can't finish. Cho Chi trying to put it back in, grabs it two, three times and gets hit by Dea Campo and will go to the line. You have to like the hustle from the 19-year-old. You've got to love it. And they call it the Great Wall of China. I mean, Andre Blatch is one of the biggest men in the tournament, but even he's giving up height to both Zhou Chi and Yi Jianlian. And we saw it there, the two of them taking it turns to go at the offensive glass. The first foul shot good for Cho Chi. 9.1 points, five boards, 2.1 blocks a game in just 16 and a half minutes a game at this Asia Championship. He's shooting 60% from the field. Although just 50% on that trip to the foul line. And you keep in mind, China kept the round to just 57 points in 40 minutes last night. Philippines have 15 points in five Blacks minutes. rejected by Cho Chi, who puts up the Great Wall of China. Foul on Castro. He gets a warning for a technical foul. He reacted there. And have a look at this block. Two big arms up there, and it was Yi this time who swatted away. Take your pick on that one. It really was the great wall. Both of them rising to the rim. And Andre Blatch has not seen anything like that in this tournament so far. Across the midway point of the first quarter, the Philippines have the edge. Here's Cho Chi. Gets the contact and will go back to the line. Foul on Hunty Veros. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tab Baldwin take a timeout here for the Philippines. Plan A worked beautifully, but now China getting into a little bit of rhythm, starting to draw fouls and starting to make their presence felt inside the paint. Shooting two. 
Cho Chi had three humongous blocks in the semi-final, as well as six points and four boards. How good can this teenager be? He's 19 years of age and already one of the stars of the show. Well, he's got all the elements at, at this stage. He can shoot, can block shots, rebound. He can put the ball on the floor and he can slide his feet and defend as well. He's just got to get bigger and stronger. Castro throwing it up, really difficult shot. Joe Chi grabs the board. Out to Lee Gen now for three. Closed down by Honti Ross. It doesn't matter. China take the lead. And early in the quarter, the Philippines were getting out in transition, getting into their offense early. And here they come in transition now. All the way down court for the big slam is Cho Chi. Team Dragon breathing fire in this red hot arena. And the steal from Go Ai Lun, and he flexed his muscles at Jason Castro. That time he had the dish to Lee Gun. And when he's knocking down trees, this place is rocking. And at the moment, it's 18 to 15 to China. Castro looking to meander his way through. And there's a foul on Lee Gant. And Castro has to continue to be aggressive. We saw on the last play when he danced around at half court, Guo was up in his grill, got the steal. That time he blew by him and drew the foul. And I wonder how long it will be until we see both Romeo and Castro in the game together. Here's Blatch. Just two points so far. Up against Yi. Blatch going to pull up for the long two. And it's long from him. And the rebound grabbed by Cho Peng. Here's Guo. Cho Chi. And they'll slow it down here with Cho Peng. Yi looking to set the screen. Cho Peng moves it inside towards the big man, who's trying to roll away from toss and finish. The Philippines have got no answers defensively at the moment. They've got to keep scoring. Blatch trying to provide an answer, but Cho Chi comes across and cuts off his path to the hoop. A foul called there on Cho Peng, diving on the basketball, but Toss got there before him. Have a look at that swat from Cho Chi. He must lead this tournament in blocks per minute. He gets his fair share in every game. I think that earlier one had he not got it, he would have got it. That was certainly his. I'd like to see them take Blatch down low. He's got a, a weight advantage on Yi. At the moment, he's dancing around and shooting jump shots. See if they can get a high percentage one close to the basket. Castro finds Toss out to Blatch. He's going to shoot the three this time. Looked off the mark all the way. The Philippines almost overawed at the moment. That's a 10-0 run for China. Cho Peng. Guo towards the foul line and called for a travel. The Philippines need to take advantage of that now. It's like the Philippines are happy to allow the guards penetrate through the middle as long as they don't open up the passing lane to the big guys. Pingris into the game as well. He had a huge cameo in the second half against Japan. But he's got his work cut out. He's giving up probably 10, 12 centimetres to Yi. A waiver onto Norwood. Uh, Foul on toss. The Philippines turn it right back over. And a good call there from the official. The initial screen was good, but he kept riding Yi to try and keep him away from the shooter. Guo Wai Lun gets it back from Lee again. Guo taking his time. Cho Peng, Yi going to put it up from mid-range, off the mark. Offensive board for Cho Chi. Boy, he's got some fight as well. So does that man, Abueva, but he picks up the foul. And we've talked all tournament as we see the big offensive rebound. And Abueva was not going to allow a three-point play there. And that was bordering on unsportsmanlike too. But we've talked all tournament about the wingmen for the Philippines being long and athletic. 
But these Chinese wingmen, they're longer, they're stronger, and they're just as athletic. And the Philippines not being able to control the boards like they have in other games. Cho Chi back at the line again. This is his first. Makes him three of five from the strike now. How about that start? Six points and six rebounds, the block as well. Best weapon for the Philippines offensively this tournament has been Castro and Blatch in the ball screen. Blatch is an answer, Castro goes himself. Can't hit high off the glass and guess who grabs the rebound? Final two minutes of the first quarter. Guo. Philippines missing their last seven shots from the field. And the foul called on Pingris as Cho Chi was looking to make a move. Well, the Philippines, they've come into this game gambling on some passive defense as we see the smart play from the 19-year-old. But at the moment, it's not working. China are picking them apart. I think they need to go to plan B, and that's aggressive up and in defense. They need to create some easy scores because when you're trying to score over the top of Yi and Zhou Chi in the half court, it's mission impossible at times. Castro a bit riled up as he has to take a seat. Romeo comes into the ball game. Cho Chi, we've talked so much about his skill set. We've seen his fight. And there we saw his intelligence. He's got a bit of everything. Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine he's got all that in one package at 19 years of age. And I mean, the world is his if he's prepared to put in the work and keep developing his body and developing his skills. <laughs> and developing his free throw shooting. It's his third miss. He's taken all seven of China's foul shots in the quarter. Hit four of them. He does get the second, so seven points, seven boards in the first eight minutes. That's now a 12 to nothing run. And you look at the lineup the Philippines has. They've got Pingris and Toss in the front court. But those two guys are shorter than Jai, Jai Xiao Chun, who's the small forward for the Philippines, so they got their work cut out on the boards. Cho Chi comes out of the ball game. Here's a Boiva. Trying to get away from Lee again, trying to force it in off the glass. And the Beast just trying to bully his way through and give the Philippines something. And you, when you're up against a bully, which this Chinese team is in the paint, you've got to go back at them just as strong. And a Boiva did it that time, drew the foul on Wong. Let's see if the Philippines can end their drought here in the first from the foul line. Abueva does. It well, stops the 12-0 China run. It was 1.47 until quarter time, and we saw in the, the bronze medal game between Iran and China, momentum can swing so many times, and it's important that the Philippines lock down defensively here and then put some points on the board. And as I say that, they're into man-on-man -man defense. Yi. Yeah. When it goes from Wong, this is Lee again. Up against Norwood, Romeo coming out quickly to close down Guo. Yi setting the screen. He's going to shoot the long two. And it's short, there's contact underneath. A foul on Abueva. He can't believe it. His mouth wide open, but it's going to be two shots. Tab Baldwin can't believe it either. But there's such a height mismatch underneath the basket that they have to be so physical on the boards. And that puts pressure on the referees. Abueva and Deo Campo both picking up two fouls in the first quarter for the Philippines. Cho Peng on two for China. And the first foul shot missed by Wong. <laughs> Able to get the second. And for all of the momentum, for all that China are doing right, it's only a six-point ball game. Romeo behind the back. Abueva, Pingris setting the screen. Abueva trying to get his way to the board again. Picked up by Pingris, Abueva left under the hoop. Trying to force it in. And trying to come away with it. There's just no joy for the Philippines right now. Big time swap from Pingris. It's a real wrestling match of a final right now. And a foul called there in the open court. What a break for the Philippines. 
China in the bonus and they get two free throws to get this back to four and we see the ball handling skills of Romeo could have been a hint of a cradle on that spin move but he is so exciting and as I said earlier I think they need to go with Romeo and Castro as often as they can because their speed is what can trouble China and open up some three-point shooters because we saw Castro hit a three, we saw Honteveras hit a three, but have they had an open look since? Terence Romeo at the foul line. Ten points in the quarter-final. And then only three points in the semi-final. His level has dropped slightly over the last two games. He was four of 18 from the field in that quarter-final, only one of six from downtown. He was one of five from the field yesterday in the semi-final. A miss from the foul line and it's a five-point ball game. Guo, final minute to the first. Guo trying to find a way through. Good defense from Toss. Here's a transition chance for the Philippines. Romeo lightning fast in transition. Forced to turn back, goes onto the left hand, looks to drive. Aggressive move towards the backboard. And he gets hit. Now that's an audacious drive straight at the 217 centimeter Wong. He draws the foul. But they've got to continue to do that. You see he got stepped on there by the big man. That would have hurt. But the Philippines look so good early with Castro getting into the lane. Their little men are the key to this because they don't have the shot makers in the other positions. They've got finishers in those spots. And it's a war right now, that's for sure. Romeo misses his first from the foul line, so just one of three now. The second one will drop to make it a four-point game. And JC Intel into the ball game, takes out Abueva, who's sitting on two fouls. Two possessions left in this quarter, really important for both teams. And JC Intel, who didn't play at all in the semis or the quarters. Yi, moved around by Wong. Chai, in towards Yi, it was over the top of him though. Good Still deflection there ball. from Intel. Long arms. And it's so important that whenever the bench players are in for the Philippines, they bring that defensive intensity because that's their strength. 16.9 remaining in the first quarter. Yi. Chai moving it on towards Wong. Wong looking to back in and go to work here. Double team comes across and Gamwelas perhaps doing just about enough. Romeo. Can he get a shot away here? Defence got a piece of it, and no score for the Philippines at the end of what has been an enthralling first quarter. They're only down by four. China have made a number of highlight reel plays, went on a 12-0 run, but at the end of one, it's China 23, the Philippines 19. The start of the second quarter here in Chongsha of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship final. China 23, Philippines 19. Chao Shi Wei across to the far side. They move it in now towards Wong. Gan Weilas all over him and a foul. And we see Gan Weilas and Intel into the game. They haven't been playing a lot of minutes in the final few games, but Ted Baldwin's got them in there to use fouls. Don't let any easy baskets inside make them earn it from the free throw line. Wong played 10 minutes yesterday, made his only shot in the game in the semi final. Only 21 years of age himself. Cho Chi. Going for the ball, Blatch able to grab it, only his second rebound of the game. Romeo. Let's see what Terence Romeo can come up with here. When it goes from JC Intel to Ganwelas, Blatch in the corner, closed down quickly by Wong. 
Final seconds of the shot clock, he's going to shoot again, the three off the mark. Blatt's just one of seven now from the field. And he could have got the younger player on his back there, but he was happy to float out to the perimeter and take a jump shot. He's got to get down and dirty. Try it. How about that? The ball sticks. And it might just be one of those finals where we see everything. Your Jai was red hot early on against Iran in the semi-final. He hit two big three-pointers. And that one was just a little off the mark. You just wish that was a rumor gum. Romeo pulling up from mid-range and getting it to go. Big basket for him, big that, basket for the Philippines. That is so tough. He was going left, falling to his left-hand side, but shooting it with the right hand, and he still had the touch to make it drop. Only a three-point game. Cho Chi puts the ball on the floor, away from Blatch, and then gets hit by Pingris. That's a playoff foul or a gold medal foul there from Pingris. But again, Andre Blatch, they just need him to be better. He can't be jumping at shot fakes from Joe Chi. He's got to get down low, defend, keep his body between his man and the basket like he did so well against Ehedadi for Haran. These are going to be foul shots number 9 and 10 for Cho Chi. He hits the first one. Closing in on a double-double in the first half. This is the second. He seems to be splitting the two, but trying to have it back. Chao Shi Wei. Wong looking to set the screen. Chao Shi Wei goes inside, back to Lee Gen. Final second of the shot clock. They don't get it away in time. It's a violation. That's one of the best defensive sets so far from the Philippines. It's a four-point game, but if you look at the stat sheet, China, six offensive rebounds to one and 14 free throws to six. So the Philippines doing a good job hanging tough, but somehow they've got to clean the defensive glass. Dio Campo and Blatch, they've got to step up in that area. And so do the likes of Norwood and Hontiveros, and we haven't seen a lot of those two in the game so far. Terence Romeo. Looking to attack, looking to spin to the foul line, showing all the moves. No look past to Dea Campo. He's going to back in and go to work against Wong. Tough hook shot won't go. Well, clever play from Wong. He stepped up underneath him, made that body contact and threw him off his shot. Oh, what a play from Dio Campo. Great hustle play to save it on the baseline. And then Blatch gets fouled by Chai. That's the first team foul on China, two minutes in. It's so important for the Philippines, they draw some fouls. It's hard enough scoring against China, but if you can get some cheap fouls in the bonus and get some free throws, it just relieves the pressure of this defense and this crowd. Castro, 17.8 points per game in this tournament. Throws it towards backcourt, and it will be a violation for the Philippines. And Jason Castro just not finding his flow so far in the final. Castro saying that ball was tipped. It certainly looked like it. There were some long arms in the way, but it's Chinese ball from the side. Chao Shi Wei to Guo. Cho Chi calling for the ball. Finds him now on the foul line across to the far side. Chao Shi Wei back out to Cho Chi. He's going to shoot the long two. Short, Yi. Inevitably grabs the rebound, and Cho Chi trying to force it home. Gamwelas picks up another foul. Excellent foul from Gamwelas. He has some words for Joe Chi, who walks away with a big smile on his face. But Gamwelas giving some good minutes. There's a lot of ball on that. And I think he said to Joe Chi, you might get two free throws, but you just got swatted. The athleticism of Gamwelas is plain to see. We saw that huge alley-oop dunk he had earlier in the tournament. One of the plays of the competition so far. And using the same athleticism on the defensive end, but sending Cho Chi back to the line again, where he's now 7 of 11. Well, Intel and Gam Walos came into the ball game. They held that four-point deficit while they were in there, and now Hontiveros and Norwood back into the game. I think the Philippines need to run a play here for Hontiveros. See if they can get him a wide open shot. Norwood. 
De Campo. Able to get away, pull for a travel though. Jao Chi Wei, he hooked arms there with Dio Campo. You see both Dio Campo and Baldwin signaling it, but he got away with it and forced the travel. And China really pushing the limits with the physicality of their defense. It's such a fascinating final right now. Only a six point game. Yi, Chao Shi Wei for the three. Rebound grabbed by Dea Campo, and here comes Castro. Back to Dea Campo to shoot the three. He falls to the floor as he takes on the shot, doesn't make it. Guo. They swing it around to Chao Shi Wei from the corner. He got it. That's out to a nine-point lead, but the Filipino defense, for the most part, is doing their job. They've just got to put some points on the board. 21 points in 14 minutes. Castro spinning, finding a pass to there. Campo is hit by Chai. And Castro creating open shots on two of the last three possessions. And how about this spin move? Dio Campo, he's 77% from the free throw line in the tournament, so a good man to have there for the Philippines. Chao Shi Wei's triple from the corner, making it a nine point Chinese lead. Dio Campo trying to eat into it from the foul line. He's made an important contribution to these championships 8.4 points, 5.8 rebounds. And two important foul shots. Zone defense again here from the Philippines. And Yi goes down low. He wants the ball in the low block against Blatch, his former Washington Wizard teammate. Onto the corner to Ding, who's back in. De Campo makes another important contribution. Castro. Castro going through the gears. Over towards Honti Veros, who had to save it. De Campo. Castro again. They just can't get Blatch in the ball game right now. Castro is going to try and take it on himself here. Hangs it high. Blatch going for the offensive ball. Grabs it. Looking to turn. Nice footwork. And he puts it in. Maybe now he'll get going. And that's exactly what they need from Andre Blatch. They can't get the ball movement against this intense defense to get it to him in preferred position. So he's got to go and get it off the offensive glass. And his second field goal nearly 15 minutes in. Ding. Cho Chi. And De Campo hit, the basket won't count. No De Campo, I think, caught by an elbow, but that's almost inevitable with the size difference. Second foul on Hontiveros there. Team foul number four. Chai Xiao Chuan. Cho Chi setting the screen now as Guo moves inside out to Ding in the corner. Conti Veros has gone down hurt and then grabbed the foot of Cho Chi as he came across him. And Conti Veros knocked over there. Didn't get the foul call. We'll see it just afterwards there, but he's, I think he got a knock to the knee. And then Cho Chi just rubbed salt into the wounds by jumping right over the top of him with a knee to the head. It's a hotly contested final, no doubt about it. Two teams battling for the gold medal and only separated by five points. And there's been a lot going against the Philippines so far, but they've hung tough. They're still within five points. They've just got to keep making stops. Guo knocks it down from the outside and the lead back to eight. Now he's shooting 25% from long range, so when he's connecting, it's a good night for China. Castro to De Campo. Over the top of Cho Chi. No good. They could make it a double digit lead here for the first time in the game. Foul on Castro. Castro guessed the right way, but Guo is so quick that he couldn't get there in time. We see the meeting of the blurs there at midcourt. 
I think that last possession, though, and too often we see a possession for the Philippines where Andre Blatch doesn't touch the ball. I'd love to see him with the ball in the mid post, some cutting action away from the ball. Use his passing skills to try and shake the Chinese defense. Guo at the line misses the first, so it's going to remain a single digit game just across the midway point of the second quarter. And make it a nine point China lead. They've missed seven from the free throw line now. Norwood. And this is where Blatt should have the ball. Romeo cutting to the hoop is fouled by Guo. But I like that little bit of offense. I'd love to see that Andre Blatt, but a nice pass from Dio Campo. And what about the quick cut from Romeo? Four and a half to play. In the first half, Romeo at the line. Both teams having struggles. China 11 of 18, the Philippines 6 of 9. Romeo gets the second one. There's 4.29 till half time. Just so important the Philippines hang tough here. There's so much atmosphere here, but if it's close down the stretch, that atmosphere can become a negative for China if the Philippines are within striking distance. Guo. We saw them on that 12-0 run in the first quarter. How this place exploded. And they're lifting it again here. Cho Peng makes it a double-digit lead. Well, that's exactly the shot the Philippines want China taking, but Cho Peng is good enough to hit the pull-up over a hand. Blatch calling for it now, up against Yi. Looking to make a move towards the baseline. Out to Dea Campo, shoots the guarded three, can't hit. Romeo trying to grab it, and Cho Chi will come away with it. Blatch just turned into a potential double team. Knocked away from Guo. Able to recover. And Cho Chi is going to shoot the mid-ranger. He's going to knock down the mid-ranger. And the 15-time champions are gunning for gold. They have it, and there we see Hamad Ehadade. And early in that game, the bronze medal game, Iran led it by 15. Their coach, Dirk Bauman, then substituted his entire starting five out and let Japan back into the game. I don't think Gong Li Ming's going to make a mistake like that. So the Philippines have to start hitting some tough shots. De Campo, let's see if he can hit this one. He can right off the timeout. Big three for the Philippines. And a big three minutes for the Philippines here. Can they stay within single figures by half time? Yi, back out to the perimeter. Long two is short from Cho Peng. Out of bounds, Philippines ball. And the defensive strategy is sound from the Philippines. Double teaming inside, making players shoot shots over a hand. And so far, though, they've given away too many offensive rebounds. That's a flaw in any defensive plan. Romeo behind the back. Gets the defense in the air. Can't finish. And the Philippines there surrendering the board. They had no one on the offensive glass. And they need to start securing a couple of extra possessions themselves. Cho Chi to Chai. He takes on the three. Can't hit. Yi able to tip it to Cho Chi. Here's Guo, and a foul on Toss. And that's free throws. Chance to make it a double-digit lead again. Two and a half to play in the first half of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship final. First one good for Guo Ailun. Averaging nearly 10 points a game at this tournament, 4.2 assists. A steal and a half a game as well. And he now has eight points in the first half of the final. Abueva spinning into the lane. Can't get it to go initially, then almost touched it back in. China will come in transition here. 
Norwood making a vital defensive intervention. As he so often does, and the Philippines using Norwood as the point guard, taking away the defensive pressure of the likes of Guo and Zhao, who often spark the fast break points for China. China threatening to get away before half time. The Philippines just trying to cling on to them. Yi. Turns around and a little too long on the shot. Good defense that time. Romeo. Around the screen of De Campo, back out to Abueva, steps inside. De Campo to shoot the three. Offensive board for Abueva and puts it in. Big play from him. Yeah, he's been important in this first half. Only four points, but rebounds, defense, and, and some important fouls underneath the basket. It sounds silly, but China have been struggling from the free throw line, so preventing those easy baskets is important. Chai, Cho Chi. Contact involving Abueva and Yi. It's going to be number three on Abueva. And how that was pinged on one player or the other, I'm not sure, but Yi gets two free throws as the result. Minute and a half remaining in the first half. China leading by nine. And Yi takes it to double figures again. Five points for him in the game, his first trip to the foul line. Two of seven from the field, as well as those eight rebounds. Misses the second foul shot. The tech foul on Joe Peng. He had a few words to say there to Abueva. Now that's a nice little break for the Philippines, but they've got to make this free throw. And a break at a vital time as well when momentum heading into the interval could be key. We see he just stood over the top of a waiver and said a few words. And the referee's mindful of this um, getting out of hand a little bit quick on the whistle. De Campo at the foul line. And misses the free throw. Now we see the incident again involving Cho Peng. Hit with the technical foul. Not a lot in it, but enough for a technical. Romeo. Ganwelas to Norwood. Under the hoop, finds Romeo in the corner. Steps inside for the two. Romeo off the mark. Yi grabs the rebound. Here they come in transition with Chai to flip it up and in. Well, some nice execution on the last play by the Philippines, but Romeo hesitated, and with the long arms of these Chinese defense, you've only got a split second to get that shot off, or you're covered. The Philippines really struggling from the field here in the first half. Norwood takes on a shot. Norwood coming up with a big performance in the first half, has seven. And he's one Filipino player with the athleticism and long arms to shoot over the top. He's got to be more aggressive here. We've said it all tournament, but tonight is the night. Li Gen to Guo for three. Bam! Chinese charge continues in Chongxia. And more push and shove under the basket. This time it was Yi and Dia Campo. And this is at boiling point this game. And what, would, what else would you expect from a gold medal match? Talking of Gabe Norwood, averaging three points per game in this tournament, seven in the first half here. It's perhaps one of the criticisms of this Philippines team that he can't shoot the ball or he doesn't shoot the ball, and that's one thing that's missing because he's certainly got the defensive side of the game down. Well, he's been able to shoot the ball in the first half when others perhaps haven't stepped up, but Guo certainly stepping up for China, and they lead the Philippines by 13. Castro and Blatch combining for just nine points so far in the first 20 minutes of this ball game. They combined for 49 points a couple of nights ago. 
They've only combined for 24 minutes as well, so Tab Baldwin keeping them in reserve. Romeo, last shot of the half for the Philippines is good. And that makes it an 11-point game as Toss knocks one down right at the end of the second quarter and just gives them something heading into the halftime interval. The China have exploded away in the second quarter behind 12 points from Cho Chi and 11 from Guo Wai Lun. And they lead at the half 46 to 35. China 46, Philippines 35 at the start of the third quarter. Blatch onto the left hand. Stops mid-range, puts it in. And Andre Blatch, who only had four points in the whole of the first half, gets two right at the start of the second. Exactly the aggression they need from him, and he's got to demand the ball time and time again and make plays for himself and for his teammates. Yi up against Blatch now. He's able to shoot over the top of him, can't get the drop. Cho Chi, another rebound, then knocked away by Norwood. Big play at the defensive end from him. Yeah, it's so important. There's four and five Philippines players on the boards, just tipping the ball away from the taller Chinese players. Castro bumped by Chao Shi Wei. He struggled to guard Castro tonight. Guo Ai Luan was all over him. It was a fantastic matchup, but Castro's been too quick for, for Zhao. Castro onto the left hand here, trying to show that speed again. Misses the shot though, and he's frustrated with himself. Chao Shi Wei out to the corner. Ding for three. Way over the top of the basket. Air ball from Ding. Norwood called for the double dribble, and the Philippines have had a great opportunity here to eat into this deficit and create momentum at the start of the third quarter. They've not really taken it. They have to make the most of it, and they have to execute well. Castro or Blatch have to be involved in some way on every possession. Ding. Cho Chi stops on the foul line, puts it up and puts it in. That's the hole in any zone, the high post, when you've got a guy who's 217 centimetres tall who can catch and shoot from there. Gee, that's hard to stop. Castro trying to get away from Chao Shi Wei. Out to Honti Veros in the corner. Off the mark from three. Chao Shi Wei grabs the rebound. Another one of those opportunities for the Philippines goes begging. And Castro then with a foul in transition. And that was just a missed opportunity from Honti Veros. Castro deep into the paint. He split two defenders with the pass. And Honti Veros missed the wide open triple. And Castro picks up foul number three. Lose him, lose the game. Simple as that for the Philippines. But I think if you take him out of the game for long stretches on foul trouble, you're probably going to lose the game anyway. Cho Chi, Yi calling for it inside. It goes around the perimeter first, then comes into the big man who's fouled by the other big man. Yi will go to the line. We see Gabe Norwood there was fronting Yi and the nice pass over the top. But Blatch was right up at the foul line guarding Joe Chi. I know he can hit that shot, but I think the Philippines need Blatch closer under the basket. If Joe Chi's going to hit five or six of them in a row, well, they're probably too good anyway. I think they should tempt the young man and get some demons into his head. Second foul on Andre Blatch. Another missed free throw for China. Only shooting 61% from the foul line in the game. Four of, or 14 of 23 now. Well, the Philippines had the plan, make them shoot from outside, foul them if they come inside, and it's worked pretty well. China have missed their free throws. The downfall has been their offensive rebounding. Eight O boards in the first half for China. 12-point Chinese lead. Two minutes into the second half of the final. Ponte Veros will take on another three and knock it down as he falls to the floor. And China are contesting those shots so closely. How often have we seen the Philippine shooter spill to the floor after they take the shot? And that time, Honteveros makes it. Chao Shi Wei onto Cho Peng. 
And he goes to Cho Chi. Long two off the mark, grabbed by Castro. And then he's fouled, they don't want to let him free down court. You certainly don't, and that's the defensive stand I like. Say to Joe Chi, you hit that time and time again, rather than allowing Yi passes in underneath the basket for layups or fouls. De Campo, Pontiveros. His bypass, Blatch. Might have been caught in the eyes, then goes looking to drive at the defence. Up against Yi and gets contact. Be interesting to see that again on the replay. And we've got a tech foul on the bench for the Philippines. So we see the armbar out in front from Yi. But someone on the Philippines bench, it wasn't Coach Baldwin. Someone else has said some words and the referee took offence. So we'll have two free throws here for Andre Blatch and then one and possession down the other end. In fact, they're saying it's on, on Blatch. Well, that's interesting because when he blew that technical foul, the ref was looking straight at the bench. Perhaps something to say from Andre Blatch from behind him. Blatch hitting his first foul shot of the game. And one more to come. And he can make it a seven-point game. It's been a pretty decent two and a half minutes at the start of the half for the Philippines. And Blatch now the leading scorer for them with eight. He's got as many points in the second half already as he had in the whole of the first. But the technical foul sends China to the line now. It was almost as if the hot start from his teammates, Castro was on fire, Hontiveros hit a three-point, and Blatch just went inside his shell a little bit. But in the time of need now, he has stepped up. Can he continue to do it against this pressure defense over a full quarter and a full half? Cho Peng finding a way through. Finding a way through, Andre Blatch. Norwood. Out to the corner, around to Blatch on the perimeter. Looks to get inside again. Foul on Cho Peng. Basket doesn't count. That's the fourth team foul already on China. And that's something the Philippines have to do. Now the aggression comes out of the Chinese defense and any foul allows a couple of easy free throws. Fourth foul on Cho Peng as well. He takes a seat and uh, Chai Xiao Chuan comes into the game. Castro, around the big frame of Blatch, under the hoop, out to Deo Campo for three. The Philippines are having their chances here to really make it a game. They certainly are. That was some outstanding playmaking and patience from Castro. He just held the ball until he could find the open man. Chai to Chao Shi Wei. Chai again. He's going to shoot from the outside. Short from him. Castro can come in transition now. Looking to go all the way. Two! How about the rejection from Chai who slams the door in his face? And Zhao just did a good job getting in front of him, bumping him. We'll see him here going to the basket. Bit of contact there, just enough to put Castro off his shot. Blatch to Castro. He's going to shoot a three now, Castro. Can't hit, rebound grabbed by Ding. You said it before, so many opportunities for the Philippines here. I'm not sure how many of them they can pass up and stay in this game because China are going to get hot eventually. Cho Chi into Yi. De Compo doing a great job. Cho Chi. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Chao Shi Wei puts the ball on the floor, finds Ding in the corner. And De Campo grabs the rebound. Blatch with a word or two for one of the referees. He puts the ball on the floor. Blatch looking to go strong to the hole. And will go to the line. What a play that would have been. And he's a different man after half time. Look at the look on his face. He's pumped up. He's angry. It might have been that exchange with Yi. I'm not sure. But he looks ready to take this game over. It was just as well that he got the hand on Andre Blatch's wrist there because he was about to get dunked on. Blatch means business, back at the line, 
And it's the first. And we saw him hush the crowd in the game two nights ago in the quarterfinals against Lebanon. And he looks even more focused than that tonight, though. Gets them both to go. Nothing but net. Nothing but focus. And the first player for the Philippines into double figures. Six points now in four minutes at the start of the second half. Ten in the game. Yi. Chai. Cho Chi posting up. Stolen by Norwood. Using those long arms again. And then he goes down and turns it over. I think he, he bumped the elbow of Dio Campo as he was losing his balance there. He looks like he's really sore. We'll see here. Pivots around. Oh, oh, he gets hit in the face by Joe Chi. The referee was looking right at that. He must have deemed it wasn't sufficient contact. But, um, yeah, interesting call, but it's going to be Chinese ball. And Gabe Norwood struggling to see at the moment. Jason Castro having some words to the referees as well. You know, there's tough breaks and missed opportunities all the time here for the Philippines, and yet they're still within eight. But it can't go on. If it does go on, it'll be one of those finals where they're really kicking themselves at the end. Yi. Call for a travel. That's the makeup call. Going back the other way. That's an eight point ball game here. We're about midway through the third quarter. What a tense moment. Last night, Iran were able to get it back to six, but they weren't able to maintain that pressure. Can the Philippines keep putting the pressure on? We've got a foul underneath. That's on go. He picks up his second. And halfway through the third, it's so finely poised right now. Hints of the Philippines are building steam, closing down the gap. A chance to make it a six-point game, having been as many as 13. Abueva misses the first from the foul line, though. Misses them both. And with China over the foul limit and still five minutes to play in the third, the Philippines have that opportunity if they can hit their foul shots. Yi up against Blacks oh, with move. the finger roll from Yi. And a chance at a three-point play. How about that move? He was too quick. The pick and pop with Go. He draws the contact. What a finish. Outstanding play from Yi. How about the body control? That's a solid bump from a big man and he still finishes from behind the backboard. Look like the calmest man in the arena. Andre Blatch checks out of the game with three fouls, so a doubly big play there from Yi. Can't complete the three-point play. Toss secures the rebound, 10-point game, right on the midway point of the third. Romeo. He's going to pull up for three. Can't get the bounce. He gets the ball. Guo. Lee again. Make sure it's a three. He made absolutely sure it was a three. And there's only so many opportunities you can waste against China because they've got a point guard like Guo who finds a shooter like Lee Gun, and it's a 13-point game. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, back to largest lead of the game. As Abueva looks to get that to go, gets contact from Lee Gen. This is where they really start kicking themselves for those missed opportunities. Well, you felt had they done things right, it could have been a tied ball game. And then every shot for China would have been different, it would have been tighter. The atmosphere in the gym would have been different, but right now this place is rocking and the Chinese team is rolling. Pivotal, halfway through the third. Abueva hit his first two foul shots. He's missed his last three now. Misses four in a row. Guo. Back out to Cho Chi. Yi. Driving inside, hands it off. Hesitation on the shot. Rejection from Deacampo. Campo. 
And a braver in there as well. He is providing some real energy here in the third term. Here's De Campo to Romeo. Here's a braver for three. Short. Yi so quick to grab the ball as it came back down. And this is a young Chinese team, but in every game we've seen, when they smell blood, they go for the jugular. And you've just got that sense about them now. Guo. Cho Chi onto Lee Gen. Hit the big three a few seconds ago. He'll hit another one. Big one two punch from Lee Gen. De Campo. Norwood. Lead has grown to 16. Toss putting it up off the mark. Tip back into Philippines' possession. Romeo. They could really do with a the score. They're not going to get one. No, and they're getting the shots they want. They're just not hitting them. And they had to play a near-perfect game to beat China here. It's going to take something special. It's got to start at the defensive end, though. Final three minutes of the third. Guo back to Yi. He's going to pull up for the long two. Abueva grabbing the rebound. Foul on Li Gen. And a few more words exchanged there, this time between Lee Gun and, and Abueva. He didn't appreciate the elbow that was raised, but you can't leave one of the best three-point shooters in the competition open. Look at the smile on his face. He knows he's halfway down the track to gold. Shooting over 50% from three-point range at this championship. And he's three of three from downtown in the final. Abueva ends a run of four missed foul shots in a row. Well, Ligon, he hit his first nine three-pointers of the tournament. He quickly became a crowd favourite, and they are riding every three-pointer with him. Offensive board off the missed foul shot this time. Honti Veyros looking for a three of his own. Yi grabbing the board. Abueva battling again and called for the foul. Number four on Abueva. Foul trouble mounting for the Philippines. The Philippines are at breaking point here. Blatch and Castro on the bench. Gabe Norwood's just gone to the bench. Hontiveros is the only starter out on the floor. I'm not sure where their points are going to come from. Chai. Knocked away from Guo, able to recover. Lee Gen. He's able to recover too. Across to Chai, takes on the three, short. Romeo able to grab it. They need a good two and a half minutes here. Romeo hasn't provided the spark that we know he can do yet. Abueva with the fake, driving the baseline, banks what a it in. Finish. Fantastic move, strong move when the Philippines desperately needed one. He went straight into the body of Yi, he rode the contact. And what a beautiful soft finish. And he's been big for the Philippines here in the third quarter. And playing on four fouls as well. Guo Lun. Final two minutes of the third. Chai onto the corner to Lee Gen. Guo again. He's going to shoot the three. Wide of the mark. And the Philippines again have an opportunity to make it look a little better for them at the end of the third. They need a big 100 seconds. I'd like to see Romeo off a couple of screens here. They've got one at the top. I'd love to see two to bring both Chinese big men out. Toss. Turns the ball over, three-second violation against Sunny Toss. And that one high screen and the one big down low works well for the Philippines when they have a shooter in the game like Blatch or Dia Campo. But with both Pingris and Toss out there, I think bring them both out, see what the defenders do, because if the big men for China sag off, Romeo can go to that pull-up jump shot, which he can hit from 18 feet. Guo. Final minute and a half of the third. China have looked in control for a long time. Just hints from the Philippines. Lee again misses from the outside for the first time, but they get the offensive ball with Cho Peng. Guo. Looking to drive in himself now. Denied by Abueva. And how about that from Abueva playing on four fouls. Oh, he's been superb. And we talk about his stats, seven points, 
with those four fouls, but he's got four boards as well and two offensive rebounds. It's been a real energy burst. Speaking of energy bursts, Castro with the ball. They could do with a bit more from him. Five points right at the start of the ball game. Nothing since. Only one assist in the game. Castro onto the left hand, up against Cho Peng, forced away. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Elevates from mid-range, way over the top of the hoop. And here come China in transition now, with Guo going through the gears, knocked away, out of bounds, still China ball. China. What about the defensive possession from Joe Peng at the other end? He switched out onto Castro, and he stayed with him for about 14 seconds of the shot clock and forced a tough shot. Quick hands there from Honte Veros. 37 seconds remain in the third. Cho Peng moves it on to Chao Shi Wei. Screen set by Cho Chi. Looking to move inside, it goes to Guo instead. Through the legs a couple of times, looking to attack now. There's the pirouette move. Hung it high, Abueva battling for the board again. Abueva trying to grab it, eventually Toss does. Castro then fouled on half court by Chao Shi Wei. He's a strong unit, Jason Castro. Jiao going in there to commit the foul. He gets a little elbow and that hurt. But Castro to the free throw line. So important that he makes these two free throws. You know, 11 point ball game at three quarter time. That's still gettable, especially with some of the big time players in the Philippines lineup. Jason Castro's first point since the opening minutes of the game. And short on the second foul shot. Toss grabs the rebound though, and then a foul. That one's on Joe Chi, it's his second. And Toss has been serviceable today for the Philippines. He has really battled out of his weight division. He's got five boards, including three offensive rebounds. That's a massive contribution from him. And that's Joe Peng out of the ball game. Fouled out on seven points, off three of six shooting. And that's a win for the Philippines as well. Joe Ping, not only does he score points, but defensively, we saw him before. He could switch on to Castro. He can guard big guys. He can do it all. And Toss gets them both to go. So a 10-point game, final seconds of the third. Can they get the defensive stop? They can. Castro pulling up to try and bank it in. What a potential turning point in the momentum swing that could have been at the end of the third. Start of the final quarter of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship final. And it's the host, China, who have the double-digit lead, 60 to 50. Time running out for the Philippines, but still, only a 10-point ball game. They need a huge quarter. Chai, Chao Shi Wei, Castro trying to intervene, very nearly came up with the steal. Shot clock down to three already. They put up oh. the long two and get it to go at the end of the shot clock. Guo Ai Lun. Well, I was about to say it's the perfect defensive possession to start with for the Philippines, but how good is Guo Ai Lun to make that spinning shot? Castro off the mark again, so Castro two of 11 from the field. He's got to keep that aggressive approach, though. It's going to come good at some point. Ding. Chao Shi Wei, he comes to set the screen, it goes the other way, and what about the move? To get the fans on their feet, Ding to the hole, gets contact along the way, and finds the finish. And he just sliced through three defenders, some bewildered looks on the Philippines players' faces. And this is exactly the start they didn't need in this quarter. You can do everything right on defense sometimes, but China just have 
so much quality. And it's showing at the start of the fourth. And they lead by 15. Foul on Guo. Third on him. Sitting pretty comfortably right now. Castro. Ontiveros may have to light it up from the outside. He's short on that one. Just a really good contest on the shot. He thought he was free. Suddenly there was a hand near the ball. And it was just enough to put him off. Guo. Ding. Canuelas trying to guard him. Ding looking to get away. Contact came from Ontiveros. That's his third foul. And the Philippines just allowing too much penetration against this zone it's not a man-to-man -man defense but if there's a man in your area you've got to get down and defend and slide your feet because otherwise there's going to be open three-point shooters all over the place and you've seen China throughout this tournament once they get in the lane they throw that lob up and Yi and Joe Chi will slam it down Ding Chao Shi Wei Blatch back in the ball game for the Philippines final five to shoot Ding gets Norwood in the air no foul called and here's Norwood now coming down court, looking for the big finish. Great defense from Zhao Ji Wei. Now China in transition. They'll slow it down with Guo. Ding to Guo, who's going to take on the three-pointer. Too long, Blatch grabs the rebound. And that's what the Philippines want, but they're just not making the most of it at the other end. Hontiveros is just going to keep shooting them. Problem is, he keeps missing them now. Two and a half minutes without a score for the Philippines. And 28% from the field for the Philippines and 5 of 21 from long range. It's the wrong night to have a cold shooting night from the perimeter. And they've missed their last eight in a row. Yi on the turn, in and out. And a foul underneath. On Hontiveros. But the Philippines, they have to keep firing. They're not going to win this game walking the ball up and down the floor. They've just got to hope that the shots start dropping at some point. But defensively, I think they're just too passive. It was the strategy earlier in the game. I think they've got to throw caution to the wind. Get up and in, try and force some steals and get some easy baskets. Chao Shi Wei into Yi. Guarded by Blatch. Final seconds of the shot clock. Yi hangs in the air, misses the shot. Castro comes away with a rebound. And China are leaving the door open. Blatch calling for it on the far side. Pingris going towards Norwood on the near side. Blatch receives it now to shoot the three. Gets inside instead, looking to bundle his way to the Tough board finish. and banks it in. What a pass from Norwood too. He recognised the open man and fired it across the court. It's back to 13. They are still close enough if they're good enough. Chao Shi Wei. Close down by Castro. Guo. Guo looking to attack now. Left hand lays it up and in. And again, penetration against the zone. They can't allow it. They've got to keep them on the perimeter and just make them shoot shot over a hand. But when it's Guo Ailun, it's so much easier said than done. Castro. Stopped by Guo. Guo now the leading scorer in the game with 15. Castro up against Chai now. Goes past him. Left hand onto the right. Misses the layup. The Philippines need to make those. They get away with it that time and then call for a travel. Once again, the Philippines baffled by the call. But another turnover for them. They've just made too many mistakes here today. And they've only had eight turnovers, which isn't horrible. But when you put that on board with their missed shots and the offensive rebounds they've given up. There's just been too many lapses to stay with a team as good as China. 15 points in six minutes. Certainly doable, but the Philippines can sense it, feel it now slipping away as Blatch knocks it away from Yi. And so impressed with Go Ailun. We know about his speed in the open court, but his control in this final quarter, he's kept his team calm and he's made sure they've picked the defense apart and every chance he's got penetrating in to create a look for a teammate. Blatch tipping it, Romeo coming down court, Castro with him, Romeo looking to go all the way. Chose not to take the support. Another great contest from Zhao Ji Wei, he is so good a defender in the open court, but that time 
Romeo good enough to finish off. Chelsea Wei onto Yi. Ding, wide open for three. Gets it to go. China closing in on the gold. The time running out on the Philippines. Romeo looking to take it into his own hands. Had only scored one field goal before those last two. They need to be up and in here. They need to force some steals. Try and force China to play rushed basketball. See if they can turn it over or get some defensive rebounds and run. Guo to Cho Chi. Double double in the game for him. Guo again around the screen of Cho Chi. Hangs and can't hit the shot. And how about the follow through from Cho Chi? The red hot hosts looking to fire their way back to the summit. Double double for Cho Chi. They have really struggled to score the Philippines tonight, shooting 32% from the field. Leading scorer Andre Blatch with 12 points, the only player in double figures, and four of those 12 coming from the foul line. De Campo bypasses Norwood. Blatch bypassing the three to move inside. Spins back out to Romeo on the perimeter. Final five seconds of the shot clock now. Romeo onto the right hand, difficult shot. Blatch trying to touch it back in. Big play from him. It was a great play out of the timeout. Andre Blatch got the open shot, but decided not to fire. In the end, he gets the tip in. So back to 14. A Abueva back into the game. Can he be that spark? Can he force some turnovers and make some things happen? Well, he's been called for the foul. And that'll be him for the ball game. It's him done. Calvin Abueva fouled out with nine points of three of eight shooting, five rebounds. The Philippines falling. We've got a tech foul on Go Ailun, who is giving a send off to Abueva. And just, you know, gave him such a rap for his composure and le leadership, and he picks up his fourth personal on a technical foul and you see Ding there just trying to calm him down. Got caught up in the moment. And that's what Abueva does to opponents with his energy and his physicality. We see it there. One last contribution in the game from Calvin Abueva. It's those little contributions that he makes to help his team out. Blatch misses the free throw though. And the Philippines now 15 of 26 from the free throw line. Just too many misses when you're playing on somebody else's home court. The lead is 14. Four minutes and seven seconds to play. Blatch throwing it towards Castro. The two superstars not in sync. And a turnover and a shake of the head from the big man. And it's a frazzled Andre Blatch at the moment. He hasn't been able to get anything going in his matchup with Yi. And a panic pass across the court there. China are just moments away from locking this one down. Yi to Guo. Guo quickly switching onto the right hand, fouled by Romeo. And that's free throws to come now. It's going to be hard for the Philippines if they're giving away free throws on every foul. And that was just an undisciplined one there from Romeo. Guo at the line to try and add to his game high 15. In fact, Cho Chi had 16, I beg your pardon. So Guo now level with the 19-year-old and can become the game's leading scorer with this one. And does. And we've got a gold medal game for the FIBA Asia Championship in China. A 21-year-old and a 19-year-old leading the way. Romeo. Trying to find a good look. De Campo's going to have to take over and able to put it in. Tough make inside. And that's what they've got to do. They just have to keep going at the defense, see what happens, crash the offensive glass, throw caution to the wind, try and force turnovers, try and force extra possessions wherever they can get them. 
They need defensive stops sooner rather than later. Guo around Yi. Guo gets it back, then looks to drive inside, back out to Yi. Gets Norwood in the air and just elevates and puts it in. Yi into double figures. And China closing in on the gold. He just reached out and slammed the door shut on the Philippines at 16 points, the difference. 16 point Chinese lead, final three minutes. Blatch. Blatch into the lane, puts it in, has 14 points. You just have to wonder why he hasn't been getting the ball in that position more often. You also have to wonder why he only has four rebounds. He just hasn't come to play here tonight. Ten of his 14 coming in the second half. He was almost anonymous in the first. We've got an unsportsmanlike foul called here on Dio Campo after the fa initial foul was called. Disappointment all round for the Philippines. Fourth foul on Castro. Third on Dea Campo. Guo is right on the money again from the foul line, 18 points. Leading scorer in the game and edging China with every shot, with every second, one step closer. He could be edging his way into the old tournament team here as well. What an outstanding performance from him and we see what the foul was called for. A rake across the face of Guo. And he's going to shoot the next two as well. We talk about Jason Castro potentially being in that team, six points for him off two of 12 shooting, just one assist in the final. Guo, 18 points, two assists, a block and a steal. He certainly had a big say. Lead back to 16. And a timeout call with two minutes and 33 seconds remaining. China leading 78 to 62 behind the now 19 points of Guo Ailun, as well as huge double doubles for both Cho Chi and Yi Jianlian. Andre Blatch, 14 points, only four boards. Guo. Cho Chi, able to escape two, into the lane, looking to beat Blatch with a move, knocked away out of bounds. And that's the scrambling defense we should have seen from the Philippines probably six or seven minutes ago. You end up with Cho Chi driving to the basket, that's exactly what you want, it's a turnover waiting to happen. Ding. Guo, around the screen of Yi. Out to the perimeter, Cho Chi fakes the three, puts up the three. They're battling for the boards, and that one gone down, it might have blown the roof off this arena. I'm sure it would have, and what about the hustle from Ding? His team is up 16 points, but he's still scrapping for every possession. Castro. Castro inside, going all the way, that hasn't happened too often. Certainly hasn't happened often enough for the Philippines. He's been beaten by this man, Guo. What a performance from him. All tournament we've said, who's the best point guard in Asian basketball? It's been Jason Castro in this tournament, but tonight it's been Guo Ailun. Big player stepping up in the final, denied by Norwood that time. Here comes Castro. He's going to stop for three. Off the mark, only three of 14 from the field, Castro. And that may have been the last shot for the Philippines. There's only 90 seconds to go. It's going to be party time here in Chongsha very shortly. And Guo, he wants to put the icing on the cake. Guo across to Cho Chi. High catch into the corner, ding for three. Can't hit. Just a minute to go before they're celebrating gold, though. They were the favourites. 
They were expected to do it, but that's an awful lot of pressure on a lot of young players. Well, the one good thing for the Philippines is that they have a lot of quality basketball players. That's a, an outstanding um, effort for them to get to the silver medal here in Chongsha because they lost some key players from last year's World Cup. Blatch from the outside misses. He's 0 of 4 from downtown. Final minute. Just listen to the crowd in Chongsha. Guo. To Yi. Blatch grabs the rebound. And then he's tangled up by Chao Shi Wei. The crowd was ready to explode on that one. And that has been one of their trademarks of the tournament. The pick and pop between Guo and Yi. And for one of the few times in the tournament, the jump shot from Yi didn't drop. Castro across to Blatch. He's going to shoot another three. Able to get that one to go. Too little too late from Andre Blatch. Just a few seconds between shot and game clock at the end of the final of the 2015 FIBA Asia Championship. The host, China, second by second, edging closer to celebrating the gold. Guo. Chao Shi Wei takes his time, puts it up for three. And that will do it. It's the fairy tale finish for the hosts. 16-time Asian champions. A look at the celebrations, though, for China and for Gong Lu Ming to orchestrate this run to the gold medal. Playing on home soil brings different kind of pressures with it, different kind of expectations, and they have dealt with it all superbly. They have grown throughout the tournament, and they have gone all the way unbeaten 9-0. Well, in Wuhan four years ago, the last time China won this tournament, they faced a mighty challenge from Jordan in the final, but today they were too dominant for the Philippines. They win it 78 to 67.